Could you update us about the current situation in Kobani? Um, the struggle, uh, the resistance is continuing in Kobani uh, on its 49th day today. Um, there are intense clashes, especially uh, on the eastern and southern fronts. Um, the airdrops uh, by the U.S. forces uh, provided by the Kurdish regional government, the arms were provided by the Kurdish regional government, has helped um, because they contained heavy artillery, heavy weaponry against ISIS tanks and ISIS mortar. Um, the 150 Peshmerga um, forces have entered Kobani as of uh, two days ago, um, and they are all um, militarily trained to use this, uh, these, this heavy armor. Uh, so we hope that uh, things will get better, that ISIS will be pushed even further back and uh, defeated um, in the near future. What sort of powers are supporting the ISIS? How is it that it has gotten so much strength? Well, I mean, to understand ISIS, you have to look at the, uh, the history of the Middle East, especially since the uh, invasion of Iraq. Um, the paramilitary forces that were formed there um, uh, as Iraq was being um, infested with a civil war um, have formed the backbone of ISIS. And that has developed through um, Libya, through what happened in Libya, in Egypt, in Tunisia, all the reactionary forces, all the, um, the uh, uh, forces supported by uh, the imperialist powers to uh, topple their own governments have colluded, have come together to form uh, a Frankenstein basically like ISIS. Um, and ISIS then, uh, or the, the, pe the people with that mentality, let's not say ISIS, found themselves a haven or, a, or a, a, a project to fight for finally in Syria since 2011. Um, and they were first part of the Al-Nusra Front, which was part of the Free Syrian Army, um, and then broke off to form ISIS and then ISIL, uh, ISIL, ISIS, and then the Islamic State. So I call them uh, now the international hitmen of finance capital, and that's what they are. Um, they were used to ethnically cleanse the area, um, they entered Mosul, they took the weapons from there, um, American weapons, UK weapons, uh, tanks, uh, weapons of the Iraqi army. Um, they're being funded um, and supported uh, politically and uh, diplomatically by uh, states like Turkey, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Emirates in the region. Um, and they've been attacking the Rojava revolution, the revolution of the Kurdish people, of the people of the region for the past two years. Um, but now certain forces, certain international forces have no use for them anymore. So that's why they've changed their tactics um, and changed their strat uh, strategy to try to uh, limit ISIS, if not defeat it. There are several reports of Turkey's complete insincerity in the war against ISIS. What role exactly is Turkey playing? Well, Turkey was the, uh, the corridor uh, that almost, some say, 80% of fighters who went into Syria crossed through. Turkey provided this logistic support to the Free Syrian Army. They hosted um, the most reactionary elements of the Free Syrian Army in Istanbul and Ankara for the last three years. Uh, they were one of the key allies in trying to topple the Assad regime. Um, and they did not differentiate between any of the organizations who were in the Free Syrian Army. Um, for a moderate uh, Islamists to fundamentalist jihadists who, uh, who ISIS are, are, are uh, representatives of. Um, so Turkey has played a very, very negative role, almost a terroristic role, I mean, uh, on an international and historical scale, um, in uh, providing log logistic support, military support, um, financial support, and political support for ISIS and the mentality uh, the ide ideology that ISIS are trying to spread across the region. And I can give you one example. Um, in September, a, t a train full of military artillery, tanks um, and weapons was transferred uh, from Turkey um, to uh, a village that ISIS were controlling in North Syria. Now, there's uh, footage of this, there's photos of this. So Turkey have been complicit in supporting international terrorism, um, along with uh, some of its important allies. The discourse around the Kurdish struggle in Rojava, 
Turkey has been trying to portray it in a negative way by saying that it's an extension of the PKK and it alleges that PKK is a terrorist and so on. So, to what extent has the PKK ideology influenced the movement in Rojava and why is Turkey so afraid of it? Um, good question. Um, the uh, ideological leader or representative of the PYD, uh, the Democratic Union Party uh, in Syria, uh, North Syria, West Kurdistan, is Abdullah Öcalan, who is also the imprisoned leader of the PKK and the ideological leader of the PKK. So, uh, the PKK have an ideological allegiance with the PYD, with the YPG and YPJ. Now, this ideological allegiance obviously um, leads them to act uh, similarly or uh, on parallel lines. Um, but uh, institutionally or organizationally, the PYD, uh, the YPJ and YPG uh, are autonomous um, organizations. Um, so the support of the PKK has been along um, uh, ideological lines um, and also by providing fighters uh, to Rojava and not just to Rojava, but also to uh, Sinjar, uh, to, to save the Yazidi curse from Mount Sinjar, um, to Duhok, to uh, rescue and support the, uh, uh, the uh, different groups, uh, religious ethnic groups, like the Turkmen living in that area, uh, to Kerkuk, um, to all of Kurdistan. So the PKK is a, you know, a, a pan-Kurdistani movement which is trying to support everyone who is resisting ISIS, everyone who is resisting um, oppression in Kurdistan and the wider region. Several analysts say that the YPG and YPJ have demonstrated through the means of the resistance that they are capable of providing a truly democratic alternative in the Middle East. Given that, do you see any noticeable changes in the approach of Western governments to the struggle of the Kurds? Well, um, yes. I mean, uh, for the first two years, uh, from 2012 to 2014, um, August 2014, the world turned a blind eye to the Kurdish resistance against uh, these fundamentalist jihadists. Um, it was only when ISIS uh, crossed the border into Iraq, took Mosul without a fight, took all the weapons uh, that the Iraqi army had, um, that uh, ISIS became a threat to Western interests. Up until that point, they were an ally um, and they were in collusion with, uh, with imperialist powers and, and their local um, uh, cronies. Um, but after uh, uh, ISIS uh, uh, besieged Mosul and started um, uh, its journey towards Erbil, um, there were airstrikes. Um, and then ISIS returned back, came back with the weaponry that it had taken from Mosul to Kobani. ISIS were attacking Kobani before they took the weapons in Mosul. They were attacking Kobani in June and July because the Kobani is the city where the Kurdish revolution, the Rojava revolution began um, in 2011. So it's symbolic to the Kurdish people, but it's also symbolic to ISIS. Um, when ISIS came back, the first 35 days, once again, the world turned a blind eye. It was only when, um, that, when Kobani didn't fall and Kurds around the world started uprising in the UK, in Europe, all over the, all over the world, that America had to intervene. America had to do something or say something. First they said, Kobani is not strategic, it's not of strategic importance. Um, then they said, um, we can't defeat ISIS until we defeat its sources of income. So they started bombing Raqqa and the areas around Kobani, which made all the fighters in those areas flee to Kobani and attack the Kurds even more. Um, when this didn't work either and Kobani didn't fall, they had to change their attack. And that was to support the Kurds um, in Kobani who were resisting, the YPG and YPJ. Now, who was the biggest, uh, but what was the biggest obstacle in the way of this Turkey? Because the Turkish government, uh, the AKP government, want Kobani to fall. They want Rojava to fall. They want to create a buffer zone there. Um, because they don't want Kurds anywhere in the Middle East to gain any form of recognition and autonomy. The Kurds of the KRG who have gained this, the Kurds of South Kurdistan, North Iraq, are 
um, very good allies with Turkey, but this is only a temporary uh, situation for Turkey because they can get cheap oil from the KRG. Um, so what uh, America did and had to do was actually uh, kind of um, uh, change its policy and upset Turkey and help the Kurds. Now, when, they, when, when people say uh, the imperialists helped Kurds, America helped Kurds, the weaponry that was airdropped belonged to the Kurdish people, belonged to KRG. So they belonged to the Kurds of Iraq or the Kurds of South Kurdistan. And they were given to the Kurds of uh, Rojava uh, because they are their brothers and sisters. It belongs to the people, those arms. Those arms were bought with the oil that the people live on. All America did was airdrop it. And what we say to that is they are, they are now trying to fight a Frankenstein that they helped create because they've realized that they made a mistake. So um, America had to change its policy. The UK had to change their policy, their outlook, because the people resisted for 35 days. If America hadn't done this, the world was going to ask America, why are you, are you bombing ISIS in uh, Iraq, in uh, Mosul, in uh, Duhok, uh, and not in Kobani? So they didn't want to be red-faced, uh, and this is why they did this. Is there a possibility of a removal of the ban on the PKK? Because many Kurdish analysts say that that would greatly enable the Kurds to articulate their political demands and also to express their resistance to ISIS even better. It's true. Um, if the PKK were taken off the terrorist list um, uh, around the world, then it would be much easier, much better, not just for the Kurdish people, not just for us activists. Um, we've been uh, you know, doing what we need to do for 15 years and nobody has been able to stop us and they won't be able to stop us. What it would help, especially, is the peace process and the resolution process in Turkey that is ongoing between the Turkish government and the, and the PKK and uh, Abdullah Jalan. Um, so we are asking uh, for the ban to be lifted so that there can be peace and stability or peace and stability can be reached quicker uh, uh, in, a more, in an easier, more democratic and political way rather than fighting because the terrorist ban will only lead to more criminalization and more uh, fighting between uh, Turkey uh, and, and the Kurdish people and the PKK. Um, so for this to happen, peace talks, negotiation talks have to develop. The, the PKK have taken every step that they possibly can to, uh, to uh, support the peace process, but unfortunately the Turkish government are not willing to resolve this issue in a just way. They are playing games, they are stalling, they are stalling for time, and they are actually uh, maybe not fighting the PKK, now, but they're using proxy uh, powers like ISIS to fight the Kurds across the border. Um, so the Turkish government needs to change its Kurdish policy. Um, it needs to stop denying the Kurds their rights as a nation. It needs to recognize this. And, um, you know, whether it's uh, the PKK comes off the terrorist list before uh, negotiations are settled or after uh, is a question that needs to be addressed by international powers. Um, because it's, it's, uh, it's preventing uh, the peace process from developing in a, in a natural and more healthy manner. The Kurdish struggle is inspiring several nations across, without states across the world. What prospects do you see for a greater solidarity among such oppressed nations? Um, I mean, we need to be able to be in solidarity globally. It's difficult. We all have our own hectic uh, schedules, our own agendas, um, we're all doing things um, uh, for our own movements and for our own nations, but what we need to realize is I think that the system that oppresses us is global. The system that oppresses us is united um, and in solidarity with each other. So we need to be solid in solidarity with each other against the same system that oppresses us. Uh, the uh, Tamil uh, uh, comrades, uh, the Tamil struggle, the Tamil national a liberation struggle is a case in point. Um, your enemies are our enemies. Um, we might not agree on everything um, that, that we want for our countries respectively. We have the right not to agree, but we don't have the right not to be in solidarity. We don't have the right not to see each other's struggles and to give each other's struggles the necessary attention it deserves in our media, in our political uh, meetings, in our discussions. Um, we need to support each other on the streets when we do go out and, 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 
um, demonstrate. Um, we need to support each other by sending delegations um, to our respective countries, to our, uh, to our air homelands, to inspect what's going on, to learn from each other. And I think that this is now more possible, but also now more um, in need than in any other time in history. Now is the time when we need to do this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to speak uh, to, to you, uh, to inform the people who are watching this about what's going on in Kobani and in Kurdistan.